630 here this Tuesday morning. Thanks for waking up with us on Breakfast Television. All of your top news stories up on deck. Here's Jody at the news desk. Thanks, Riaz. Good morning. Homicide investigators have worked through the night in a Langley neighborhood looking into a suspicious death. Officers were called to 203rd Street near the Fraser Highway at around 7 o'clock last night. It's an area home to the Baseline's pub and the Langley Hotel. Still not clear exactly what happened, but there are unconfirmed reports one person was stabbed and later died from their injuries. Police do not believe this was a random attack and one person has been arrested. More information is expected to be released later this morning. Jurors deciding the fate of two accused terrorists are expecting the judge to answer some of their confusing questions later today. Yesterday, jurors asked B.C. Supreme Court Justice Catherine Bruce how John Nuttall and Amanda Carotti's perception of themselves, whether lone wolf terrorists or part of a larger group, should impact the verdict. Justice Bruce said she would need some time to prepare a response as jurors wrap up day two of deliberations. Nuttall and Karoti have each pleaded not guilty to three terrorism-related charges. They are accused of plotting to bomb the B.C. legislature in 2013. A lawyer arguing for a class action lawsuit against the RCMP says the cases of hundreds of female employees claiming harassment must be considered together. David Klein says the force is toxic to women and has been for a number of years. He says the 363 current and former female officers were subjected to degrading, humiliating and demoralizing comments and behavior. No dollar figure has been attached to the case. But Klein says with hundreds of cases involved, a judgment could be in the many millions of dollars. Keep in mind that it's not easy to get into the RCMP. These are all women who are very strong physically, well balanced emotionally, otherwise they wouldn't have made it through. But day after day, week after week, year after year, they were subjected to degradation, humiliation and demoralizing comments and behavior. A report five years in the making detailing a dark chapter of Canada's history is going to be released in Ottawa today. Sixty million dollars have gone to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's study of Canada's residential schools. They were established in the 1840s to, quote, take the Indian out of the child, end quote. They lasted until the 1990s. About 150,000 First Nations, Inuit and Métis children were taken from their families and forced to attend residential schools. The report chronicles the survivors' stories. Many allege physical, sexual and mental abuse and will provide a list of recommendation. Tributes are pouring in for Jacques Parizeau this morning. The former Quebec Premier died last night at the age of 84. Parizeau was the sovereignist Premier of Quebec in the mid-1990s and came close to having the province leave Canada in the 1995 referendum. His death was announced on his wife's Facebook page last night. She said her husband passed away after a titanic fight following five months of hospitalization. The cash-strapped Vancouver School Board has decided to secure a private loan to pay for the construction of a new downtown elementary school. This is a rare move for the VSB, which is already facing more than an $8 million deficit. The board says the $1.6 million loan from the Bank of Montreal is needed because the district has exhausted capital reserves to balance its operational budgets. It also says the provincial government has refused to cover a pro projected $1.8 million shortfall to construct a four-story, 510-seat elementary school at the International Village. Uh, what it does, it gives us it gives us a school, and it gives us a school now that we have has been delayed along the way. But it also, more importantly, gives us the flexibility. We are in active discussions with the provincial government regarding some funds that are uh, allocated to the project, but that in fact we haven't actually got the ministerial approval. Some major changes could be coming soon to the Burrard Street Bridge. The city wants to put pedestrians back on the east sidewalk and take away a northbound lane in the mid-span of the bridge. It's proposing to improve the intersection at Burrard and Pacific, which has the second highest accident rate. There will be two dedicated turning lanes onto Pacific and also signaled turns onto the bridge from the west end. Staff maintain northbound traffic flow won't be affected by the changes.
The changes we're making to Gerard and Pacific uh, will address all the traffic demand needs on the corridor and will actually improve the reliability of those. There will be two uh, public meetings uh, for people to have input, but uh, at this point it seems uh, hard to believe that we're not going to see some congestion 